Okay, here's the next project on my list of questionable ideas. We have a crawl space underneath our sunroom. This picture here is showing what it was when we first built the house, actually before the house arrived, setting up these lally columns and the I-beam and footers. Uh, the sunroom sit on top of this and was about four and a half feet of crawl space. So I thought, hey, that'll make a good spot to hold onto my tractor and, and other various implements and things like that. The downside, of course, was it turned out to be a great place for mice to live and other creatures, uh, camel crickets and spiders and all kinds of awful. So I thought, hey, Narciso, my friend, uh, how about we dig this out? What if we turn this into a second basement? And he said, oh, it wouldn't be that hard. So we started digging. Actually, first we made sure that the footers that we had went deep enough. So I dug a hole next to these footers to see that it went down uh, to the depth that we wanted. And luckily for us, it did. So the dig began. So you can see here, we've, like I said, there's about four and a half feet of height. Uh, we've got a crock here. This is it was very rainy and we needed to kind of get that water pumped out. The water was kind of filling up the space pretty quick. Um, here we have a piece of conduit with electrical, which I'm going to have to redo. One of the reasons this was an attractive project was I happened to have a bunch of swampy, unusable land adjacent to this crawl space. And so too much dirt in one spot, too little dirt in another. I think I can work something out here. So we didn't have to go too far, wheelbarrowing uh, load after load of this of this dirt over to the, the wet area. Here's my daughter, of course, in her nightgown, the proper attire for a seven-year-old to be digging. Um, just kind of helping out. The clay was rather soft, um, so no rocks, no particularly hard areas. So it made for fairly easy digging, save for the, the clay sticking to all the shovels and pit. Here you can see we've got about maybe another three and a half feet down, making some progress, starting to feel like a real space. Here's my daughter standing on one of the footers, and here we've made a bunch more progress. You can see, I, I think it's interesting to see the, the colors of the clay changing as we, we get down deep. Uh, happen to be in Virginia, so this is all kind of, everything is clay. There's no organic material. There's not a lot of rocks. Uh, it's all just clay. So here you can see we're making quite a lot of progress. I took an old workbench that I had and used that to put the, put the wheelbarrow on so we could shovel onto that and get that wheeled back out to the low area. Here you can see as we dug out, it's pretty darn deep and getting the, the dirt up onto there and then had to climb up to kind of wheel it out. Here you can see not only do we have one conduit for electrical, there's also two lines for my geothermal system. We didn't realize that this was here when we started digging and we had to work around that a little bit. The electrical, we ended up moving. You can see all this thin three quarter inch foam that I have on the ceiling that ended up moving down below the concrete pad. Here we're pretty close to the finished step. Obviously it's big enough that my daughter wanted to jump down and have some fun. Now we're probably close to nine feet down, uh, but after the gravel, the foam, and the concrete, we're back up to eight feet. Here you can see the French drain coming out and where we've kind of roughed in for putting in the staircase. More French drain action. Here you see we're starting to lay out all of the gravel and putting the, the crock for the sump pump in its final location. More gravel. Running some of the electric was a little bit difficult because I had to pull apart these OSB boxes in order to, to run the wire through. Doing this in the rainy, rainy part of the spring was not the best plan, so the you see where the stairs are going to be is basically a slip and slide. So then we had one of the first issues. I had a little bit of a, a landslide here. The clay busted apart. On the other side of this wall, I've got a chicken coop, and the water kind of runs down against this wall, and that caused the clay to come apart. Here you can see more of that landslide. So we fixed that up with a bunch of handy panel and some hardy boards. Hopefully that holds. You can also see here that we framed in in a rather unusual way. We've hit in a uh, piece of two by four about two and a half feet into the, the clay as an anchor at the bottom and then just framed in enough to put in, we're gonna, we put in two inch foam paneling and then, uh, and then drywall. Here you can see we put in some nice thick plastic uh, that goes down uh, up, the, up the entire wall wall to make all the condensate go down to the French drain. We have all the gravel in at this point. We have the we have the foam underneath that gravel and we've got a layer of plastic underneath that gravel as well. So on the weekend I went down and came across this, a mysterious wet wall. I didn't know why it was wet or what was going on. We knew that when we got the sump pump, the hose clamp that came with the pump was just really terrible, not holding on well. Uh, so it was on my to-do list of things to change, but I couldn't figure out why 
why the wall was wet. Where is it leaking from? And then I went and I looked into the crock and I pulled up on the float to make it pump out. And then it squirted massive amounts of water all on my face. And I realized immediately what was going on. Obviously, I then replaced the hose clamp with a proper one. I ended up having to do some stuff to make sure this water drained properly out to the French drains. But after that, all was fine. Here you can see Narcissa laying in the block wall. A little bit more progress on the wall. Back into the pit. Now we've got plastic all the way up the walls. We've got framing around the uh, the footers. That's unavoidable. And we've got kind of more foam to do. Here you can see the old opening. You can see the footers uh, as we've started to chip away at those to make room for the new door. You can see coming out of the wall here, I've just got the electric is complete, except I don't have boxes. I'm going to use um, old work boxes on these later. Unfortunately, to make the door fit, we had to jackhammer out a good chunk of the of the footing. Uh, this isn't compromising anything. It's it fine, uh, but it was necessary in order to make it fit. Here you can see we're starting to form up the stairs, and here we're making some progress. So we've got the remesh down. We've got all of the two-inch foam, closed cell foam. The crock is in. The plumbing is done for the sump pump, and we're ready to pour. It's always a challenge to actually make a concrete pour happen. There's coordination with the people that are going to be the to do the finishing, the concrete company, uh, and the pump truck. Uh, in this location, you know, doing a wheelbarrow or a bobcat or uh, something like that to get the, the concrete over is would just be too difficult. So pump truck it is, that's about $700. So it definitely adds to the cost. You can see here we tied into an existing patio so that we can just kind of go from the patio straight down to the stairs and, and into the pit of despair. Here you see screeding out. Uh, after pouring, these guys will be finishing for a few hours. All right, here you can see after the pour and finishing, we did not use a patio power trowel for this small space. Too many obstacles, uh, so it was all hand-finished. Here I am off in the corner. You can kind of see how big the space is. I didn't mention yet, but it's about 15 by 20, a little bit more than 15 by 20. Now you can see the finished stairs. Uh, we had to do some work to make sure the, the rainwater was exiting downhill, and now we have the door in, working on getting the siding fitted around those footers. Here we are with the completed siding, and moving on to drywall. Here you can see the door and the drywall going around all of those all of those the framing for the footers a lot of this drywall work was not precision so it took quite a while with the thick mud to to have that dry out before you could sand it down this back concrete wall we've now primed the idea is my daughter and I are going to put some some art on that wall I use this as an opportunity to finish up a lot of the paint that I had left over that I would have had to get rid of anyway so I ended up painting the walls all different colors here we have that peach color green color and black around the, the casings for the footers. Here obviously you can see the doors with the green and the peach and black. Here we're starting to prep for the artwork that my daughter and I did. A quick word about these LEDs. I ordered a pack of 10 of these 8 foot strips which can be run in series. I put four of them in and it I mean lights up like the surface of the sun. So these were actually terrific for $200. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the other six but I've got them now. Here you can see Josie drawing out what we had planned. Got a little experience mixing up paints, trying to match the colors that we had planned. Didn't work out perfectly, but I think you'll like the end result. Here we are, are filling in all of the sun rays, and here we are almost complete. And here we have a mostly exhausted nine-year-old. And we're done. Here you can see those geothermal lines that are coming in, going in through the wall into our HVAC system inside. I didn't know what I was going to do with all the framing around the footers, so I went and I ordered some quartz custom-made to kind of fit on top of here. It actually turned out to be just about the right height for a standing desk. After thinking a whole lot about what I was going to do for the floor, I ended up getting a really good deal on these carpet tiles. Very inexpensive for this kind of mixed bag, and I thought that went just fine along with the, the mixed colors of the wall. Here we have the finished project. Project uh, Carpet tiles are all down, art on the wall is done, painting's done. Here's another view of the same, and another view. Okay, so here we go, down into the pit of despair. All right, you can see, looks pretty nice. What am I going to use this space for? I really have no idea. 